Hola, hello. I'm Rob Martinez, state historian of New Mexico, and this is New Mexico history in 10 minutes. Manuel Armijo is one of the more interesting people of New Mexico history. Like his contemporary, Padre Martinez of Taos, he lived through three periods of New Mexico history, the colonial period, Mexican period, and territorial period. Manuel Armijo is fascinating to me because he's one of those interesting humans we study who is both heroic, cowardly, a scoundrel, and an advocate for the poor. In other words, he was a human being. And I love his story because it's indicative of what was going on in New Mexico oh, between the years uh, 1790 and 1860, more or less. Manuel Armijo was born around 1793 in the Albuquerque area to Vicente Armijo and Barbara Chavez. His parents came from very well-to-do and powerful families, people who had wealth and influence in the Albuquerque area. By 1807, Manuel was buying and selling land in the Albuquerque area, and he was also involved in local politics, as were his brothers. By 1822, 1822 uh, Manuel Armijo is Alcalde Mayor of Albuquerque. That means he's the local magistrate, the mayor, and so he starts a political career. And his siblings, his brothers, are also influential in these areas. Um, this is the Mexican period we're in. Uh, we become Mexican in 1821, and Manuel Armijo really takes to uh, the uh, Mexican government and being part of Mexico. In 1827, he becomes governor of New Mexico, and he will hold this post three times. Uh, which is really interesting because the New Mexicans uh, who become governor tend to be placeholders, while Mexico City uh, decides who to appoint governor of New Mexico, uh, usually getting military men from down south uh, and to come up and rule over the New Mexicans, who usually didn't like the Mexican governors because they were outsiders and didn't understand the local people very well, and usually brought a lot of unpopular laws and taxes. Well, Manuel Armijo as governor uh, in 1827, he had concerns about uh, how many Americans were coming into the territory. Not because he disliked Americans. He didn't have a problem with Americans coming here. But he disliked that there were so many here and they were breaking the law uh, as far as um, coming in and uh, they were uh, hunting animals and uh, killing uh, beaver and other creatures for their hides and skins, and uh, they were not paying certain uh, tariffs and taxes. So he tried to rein that in. He also tried to get uh, help from Mexico City to do this, but um, no help came. Um, Armijo was also an advocate for the poor. He felt that a lot of land was not available to poor Nuevo Mexicanos and that taxes were uh, hurting them, that they didn't have enough uh, income or wealth to pay certain taxes. So he was popular in that sense because he advocated for poor New Mexicans. By 1829, he came into conflict with uh, Juan Bautista Vigil, who was a powerful politician in Santa Fe. And so this resulted in Armijo uh, resigning as governor of New Mexico. This is the era of the politico. This is where New Mexico's politicos are created. Uh, this idea of the strong man politician who has power and influence, who helps the locals and protects them from the injustices of wealthier people and uh, corrupt governments everywhere. So this is where you have names like Armijo and Chavez and uh, Ortiz, uh, Baca, Martinez, these are uh, uh, powerful families who are also politically astute and get involved in the Mexican government to the south and then will eventually come into conflict and then into relationships with the U.S. government to the east. Between 1829 and the mid-1830s, 
Armijo is still political, but he's also dealing with local economics. He serves a, a local office dealing with the economics of the Albuquerque area and the Rio Abajo area. Well, ultimately, um, he gets back into politics when there's a revolt at Chimayo in 1837 against Mexican governor Albino Perez. Perez was very unpopular and he imposed a very unpopular tax and the people revolted and killed him and some of his uh, cohorts, some of his amigos. Uh, this resulted in Jose Gonzalez, a Pueblo Genizaro Indian of Taos, being put in the role of governor. To some, he was a heroic governor. To others, he was a rebel governor. Nonetheless, he's the first Native American governor of New Mexico in 1837. Armijo sides with the Mexican government to the south, and he forms an army to really let the rebels have it. He arrests some of the leaders, about four of them, and jails them in Santa Fe. When a movement of rebels starts in the Santa Cruz area, led by Pablo Montoya, uh, Armijo has the four uh, men who are arrested executed. He moves north, encountering the rebels uh, between Santa Fe and Santa Cruz, and he defeats them and captures Jose Gonzalez and has him executed. The story goes that Armijo told Padre Martinez, Confiese a este genízaro para que le den cinco balazos. Confess this Henisaro Indian so that he can be given five bullets. And so ended the governorship of New Mexico's first Native American governor, Jose Gonzalez. Armijo's loyalty to the Mexican government was rewarded when he was made governor again in 1838. He kept this position uh, for about, oh, four or five years, um, continuing to monitor Americans, uh, imposing taxes, but also streamlining taxes. For example, um, uh, carts coming on the Santa Fe Trail would be taxed $500, a flat fee, which was much easier than the tedious inventory that would be done earlier uh, that was not very effective. Uh, one of the main things he did was in uh, around 18. 41, when the Texas Santa Fe expedition from Texas attempted to take New Mexico and make it part of Texas. Mexico supported Armijo because Armijo, of course, was against this. Uh, if you look at maps of the time, Texas claimed New Mexico east of the Rio Grande. Well, that was never true, and it was never the case. Um, that Texas expedition really over extended itself. They weren't sure how far it was to New Mexico. Uh, they ended up starving and uh, being depleted of resources and energy. Armijo led a campaign out to the Llanos east of Santa Fe to uh, capture these Tejanos, these Texans who had um, seceded from Mexico and were causing uh, Mexico a lot of trouble. So Armijo captured many from this expedition and sent them south to Mexico City to be interrogated where they were thrown in jail and had to be uh, uh, taken out uh, by American negotiations. So um, he saved uh, New Mexico from being Texan. And uh, that was one of the main things that happened with Armijo as governor uh, in the uh, late 1830s and early 1840s. Armijo takes a break from being governor and once again enters local politics as alcalde mayor and other different roles in the Albuquerque area. He's finally made governor again in the mid-1840s, and this is in time to come up against the Army of the West that's being sent by President Polk of the United States, uh, led by Stephen Carney whose job was to come out and secure the West and California. Well, Armijo obviously is a loyal Mexican uh, who wants to uh, protect not only Mexico, but New Mexico from an American-U.S. invasion. 
A war breaks out between the United States over a dispute between the border of Texas and the border of Mexico. 1845, uh, the United States agitated Mexico by annexing Texas. Well, Mexico claimed the Rio Nueces as the border. Uh, the United States claimed the Rio Grande. In between was no man's land. Polk wanted a war. He sent uh, uh, his soldiers into that uh, disputed territory. Mexico fired on them, and Polk claimed that American blood had been spilled on American territory, and therefore a war with Mexico was justified. Obviously, it was propaganda, and it was very much an unjustified war, but it was a land grab, and this results in a war between the U.S. and Mexico between 1846 and 1848, while Armijo is governor. Well, ultimately, um, Armijo takes a stand, at least temporarily, at Apache Canyon, uh, just west of Pecos. He and some Nuevo Mexicanos take a stand to fight Kearney, but when they hear about the American Army of the West, how big it is, and that it would be uh, pointless to fight them, uh, Armijo scatters his, his uh, army and flees. He ends up heading south, and this doesn't mean New Mexico fell peacefully. There were battles and skirmishes at places like Mora, Embudo, and of course the Taos uh, Rebellion or Resistance, I like to call it, because uh, it was Mexico, it wasn't the United States. And ultimately, this will mark the end of Mexican rule in New Mexico in 1848. Armijo will carry on, although he's somewhat vilified by history because of his uh, actions uh, dealing with the American army and the Americans invading New Mexico. But nonetheless, um, Manuel Armijo, uh, to me, remains one of those quintessential Nuevo Mexicanos. In a sense, Armijo and Padre Martinez bookend New Mexico history between the early 1800s and the late 1800s, spanning colonial, Mexican, and U.S. territorial periods. Well, that's it for now. Thank you for joining me. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hasta pronto.